So here's how I would train Peyton Pritchard to take his game to the next level based on where he's currently at. Pritchard taking it to the basket, hesitates for a moment, then makes it all. Peyton Pritchard is putting on a show right now. So the first thing to look at with any player that I work with or could potentially could work with is what am I building on top of, right? No player is a blank slate. They come with certain tendencies, strengths, weaknesses, and I need to build on top of that. So with that said, let's go into the film room. Let's look at his role. Let's look at who he currently is as a player and where I can maybe step in to add, subtract, to elevate his game, take him to the next level. So as I was saying, before we work with any player, especially at this level, it's extremely important to know what we are working with, what we are building on top of, what role does this player have, their strengths, their weaknesses, all that kind of stuff. So I started to dive into a lot of the film, especially just looking at the stats, you can kind of tell what role he plays. And obviously being from around the Boston area myself, I've watched plenty of games, so I really understand kind of their offense, the role that he plays, and a large percentage of his shots is three pointers. So if you, even if you just look at some of the stats here, he has about, 136 possessions where those are field goal attempts right going to the rim floaters jumpers a large percentage of them 60 out of that 136 so right around half are catch and shoot jump shots and then 101 are jump shots in total so we got some off the dribble and things like that so knowing his role knowing that a large percentage of the opportunities that he get comes off that catch and shoot and then also from there expanding a little bit more, he's getting into a lot of pick and rolls where he's passing a little bit, he's getting downhill. So that's a little bit of it, but again, large majority is that catch and shoot. So if that's the role that he's going to currently be playing and potentially playing next year, maybe expanding, I wanna look into a lot of these clips, see where I can come in, maybe I can add, improve the training a little bit better, improve certain things within that role. So again, like I said, let's get into looking at some of this film. So one of the first things that I notice, obviously, he gets a lot of catch and shoot shots. A good amount of them he gets are pretty much wide open. But one thing that he does that kind of holds him back a little bit is he shoots out of rhythm oftentimes when he's wide open, right? So he'll catch, he'll take his time. But because of that, it kind of throws off his rhythm a little bit. Like you'll see in this one, like with a lot of the catch and shoots that he gets in rhythm, game speed, it's much faster, it's much fluid. One like this, where he kind of catch and he slightly pauses, it's kind of tough to tell. And then obviously he kind of gets that type of shot. So I was like, okay, whatever, watch a couple more clips. And I kind of start to see the same thing in a lot of different situations. So one thing that I would work on is obviously his ability to shoot when he's not in rhythm. So as you can see here, he kind of freezes, right? He puts his foot down, freezes, and then gets into a shot. So his shot very much changes when he's open versus when he's contested. He seems to honestly shoot better when he's contested than when he's not. So same kind of thing here, right? He's literally wide open jump shot. He catches, holds, and then shoots. Very out of rhythm, very different type of shot than what he's probably used to and what he gets the majority of the time when he's contested. So this one kind of same thing. This one, the defense is kind of messing up his rhythm a little bit more. This is a tough shot regardless, but again, kind of taking him out of rhythm. When he's shooting in rhythm, like I said, he shoots phenomenally. I think he's about a 35% three-point shooter right now. I think he's not shooting as well as he typically would. Um, and that can be a lot of different things, but I think if we improve these kind of things, where he's wide open again here, catches, takes his time, misses, if we can improve these makes, even just half of them, that's gonna drastically improve his three-point percentage. So that's just kind of something that I noticed specifically, um, especially just on the catch and shoot jump shots. Again, just a kind of slow, freeze frame just because he has time it kind of just for whatever reason tends to kind of mess up the shot the other thing that i really notice is how we can kind of expand the role that he's already playing is getting a lot more off the dribble jump shots and making those at a higher percentage so you'll see like in this one this is off the dribble but again freezes because he's wide open so instead of just pulling back and shooting in rhythm again he hesitates, hesitates, and then shoots, drastically messes up his rhythm. So now getting into a little bit more examples um, off the dribble. The examples that I'm showing you are obviously the ones that he misses. He makes a couple off the dribble, but you can just tell even just looking at the stats. Statistically not as good a shooter off the dribble. Again, for whatever reason, he has a fantastic handle, so it's a little surprising to me. I think it's more so just the situations and the fact that he doesn't get a lot, so it kind of throws him off when he does. But statistically and just from what I see, I think he can do a much better job off the dribble. So a couple examples right pull up 
One thing that I notice on some of the ones that he shoots off the dribble and the reason why he misses is kind of, I'll show you guys kind of towards the end, but he doesn't really finish his follow through. He'll go more kind of like this and stop as opposed to a nice smooth follow through like he gets on most of his other shots. Great move, kind of loses the pickup, loses his footing and then tries to shoot. Obviously shot clock's involved, end of game situation, not a big deal. But again, just, just an example from what I've seen, right? I'm not going through hours of film. I'm gonna show all, you guys all of the good clips, the bad clips. I already did that, so I'm gonna save you guys the trouble. Another one off the off the dribble, doesn't make it. This is another one. I think this is a great shot. Kind of just misses it again for whatever reason. Hasn't been shooting as well. So good move. Kind of loses the dribble, loses the footing, not really on balance. Misses the shot. Again, not not terrible. It's just awkward situations. But again, I think these are things that we can prepare for. Even these awkward pickups, these awkward footworks, these are things that can be prepared and something that I do often with a lot of my pro guys is we work on these situations, right? We work on the awkward situations that are just kind of inevitable as you guys can see. So I think these are things you can better be prepared for. This is one of the ones, it'll probably be tough for you guys to see, but this is one of the jump shots where he pulls up, especially in the mid range. This is where he kind of just shoots like this and doesn't finish his follow through. And that's where he tends to miss, especially a lot in the mid range. Doesn't do it as much on three, but when he does, he typically does not make it. So it's more of a push shot for him in that mid range. Tends to miss those, especially long. With all that said, let's take it to the court and see how we would kind of train this. So how I would train this is still allow him to get plenty of reps. Only thing I would really change is add a little bit more variability and focus in on messing up his rhythm a little bit more, making sure he's shooting off of bad passes, and then also heavily implementing a lot more off the dribble shots. So like I was saying in the film breakdown, a lot of times when he catches and he's wide open, he kind of messes up his rhythm. So I'm going to purposely within our training sessions, mess up that rhythm. So I'm gonna make him shoot off of kind of hezzying, maybe a shot fake, then shoot, right? Just really messing up his rhythm on purpose to get him a little more used to shooting with his rhythm messed up. So another area, like I was saying, where his role can improve and he can be even better, especially from the three point line, is off the dribble. So a lot of our shots that we're gonna do, maybe we're going a catch and shoot and then I wanna throw in some sort of an off the dribble shot and I wanna be trying to change it up again, messing that up as much as I can. Good phrase I like to use for this is trying to break that skill. So I wanna make it as challenging as possible while he's still able to somewhat achieve the skill that we're looking for. And then I obviously wanna mimic all of the situations he's going to be shooting in, such as a lot of pick and rolls, right? He's coming off pick and roll, maybe it's a pop here, or maybe he has a little ISO, and then shooting off that pound, maybe shooting off that float, and again, trying to make it as difficult as possible and challenge him within a realistic manner. So I'd say maybe 25 to 30% of our theoretical workout is going to be a lot of high volume shooting stuff, a lot of variability, a lot of off the dribble, and a lot of shooting out of rhythm. Again, obviously throwing in contested shooting, spot shots, things like that. But I think if we can accelerate that area, even just maybe 5%, I think that's gonna help him accelerate in his current role that he's already in. So now the next area that I think we can really improve and kind of add to his current role a little bit is his ability to go to the rim, specifically his floater, and then also kind of his extension. Now he does a great job slashing and getting buckets in the paint, but when it comes to attacking with the defender on his hip, his percentages, his efficiency goes down drastically. And I think it's just naturally because of some of the things that he does going to the rim, it's just not as efficient. So like this clip right here, he's going to the rim. This is a great opportunity to get into that extension finish that I think if he adds this to his game will be very effective. And then kind of comes to two feet, which I like, not as effective in the NBA just because of speed and the length. And then kind of gets trapped, gets put in a bad situation and then obviously misses. So that's one area, one example of what he can do to add and improve. So let's watch the rest of these clips. This is the exact same thing. I think he gets an extension here. I think he has a much better chance of making it. Right, boom, pick up, and then into that extension. Doesn't probably seem comfortable doing that, so he's probably trying to get back to something like this. Again, ends up missing it. Um, but again, that's just an opportunity for improvement that I think he can, that's an extra four points he would have so far this season. This is kind of just an, another awkward clip. Didn't really know what to do. Um, I think putting him in more situations like this, he'd start to figure it out. He can get into a bump spin bump Euro into a floater, uh, but again, so this is exactly where I think we add the floater, right? 
There was another clip just like this where he didn't use the floater. But again, as a six foot one player in the NBA attacking someone six foot 11, this is gonna be really tough if you're trying to take it all the way to the rim. As you guys can see, he kinda gets blocked, rims out, it's tough, probably got fouled. So this is exactly where you see all this space that he has here. That's exactly where we just get the floater. Would have been a way easier shot. Wouldn't have had to go through all that effort going to the rim. Just a nice, simple floater here. And then once you get that floater, that defender is going to start to step out and respect you a little more. That's when you start to go by, get to the rim. That's where you work on the read. But that's an exact opportunity as to where you get your floater right here. So how I would train this is we're gonna work on a lot of small sided games out of these pick and roll situations. Like I said, specifically trying to hone in on those floaters and that floater read. There's a lot of situations like we saw in the film where he could have used the floater, but he didn't. He seems to have good technique on his floater, but I don't think he's comfortable yet in games and knowing when and why to use it. So we're gonna do a lot of small sided games specifically out of the pick and roll because that is a lot of what he sees in the situations he's in on the current team he's in, the current role, but also if he's to expand to another team, maybe he's more of a point guard role, but more of a starting role, he's gonna be getting a ton of pick and roll. So I wanna to continue to make sure we're honing in on that. Common thing that I did this past summer with one of my guys, Manny, is we're rewarding him extra points for that floater. So maybe you get one point if you go all the way to the rim. If you use that floater, you're gonna get two points. So it's kind of allowing him to see through a different lens. I'm gonna to try to get my floater more. This is a great skill for someone like him. He's a 6'1 guard, not the tallest player, not the most freakishly athletic player in terms of verticality. So he's gonna to need to be able to use that floater, especially as his career progresses. Like I said, I think he has the technical skill. It's more about the situations and when to do it. We're gonna do a lot of pick and roll situations, wing, every situation that he's already seeing in games and just trying to expand upon that. As he gets more of the green light, as he gets more minutes, I think he's gonna see himself in more of these situations. So this is something that he should definitely be preparing himself for. So then another area kind of within attack and going to the rim is transition. This is where he tends to make more mistakes, turn the ball over at a little bit higher of a clip. So I'll just kind of roll a couple clips. But again, I think it's just he's so fast that he plays way faster in his head than the game's actually moving. Uh, and he tries to do too much a little bit. This is just one where you just get stuck in that awkward situation. But again, something you can, you should definitely train. Uh, a little one on two finishing is something that he will, he'll see often, right? Same thing kind of here. Reading that this guy's not gonna actually jump and then actually finish it. That's where the de defender can throw you off if they're good. Again, you gotta train that situation, so that's one thing we would do. And then yeah, next couple, two clips, just kind of transition, doesn't read the gap well, doesn't get the pickup, and then could have had a finish, but again, turns it over in transition. That's a whole nother possession lost for the entire team. So last possession here again, doesn't read the gap as well, doesn't read the opportunity transition, loses the ball again. So with that said, let's get to the court again so we can figure out how we would actually train this. So when it comes to training this out of transition, a couple really good drills that I love to do. Really, it just comes down to mimicking the same kind of actions and situations that he's in. But one of them that I really like is it'll be a two on one. So you got offense here, offense here, defense here. And we're just literally repping out that same situation where it's a two on one, trying to read the defense. Defense is constantly trying to mess you up block your shot, steal it. Another really good one you can do is basically the opposite where it's a one on two. So he's starting here, you have a defense on both sides and he has to try to read space, maybe cut someone off and then read the other defender. So a lot of just reading space situations and putting them in those situations a lot to expand on that even more. You're working out a transition where maybe it's a tacking straight downhill. We got a guy maybe at the nail. So it's a one on one here and we also have to pay attention to this guy. Maybe I make a move and then again, now we're reading that gap. Do I go low pickup? Do I go high pickup? Do I change direction, go back baseline? So really repping that out, both right side, left side. Again, really kind of simple, mimicking these situations with defense in as many game-like situations as we can. And I feel like if you do that enough times, eventually, you know, things start to pick up. He gets a lot better at reading space and doing the right thing at the right time. As a trainer, especially working with players of this caliber, I'm not trying to rebuild his whole game. I'm not trying to completely eliminate certain parts or just focus on certain parts or maximizing that role so he can continue to be great at what he's already great at and then slowly adding or subtracting things to make him a more valuable player to this team and for his future, right? Because we don't wanna just maximize his current role, be great at shooting, and then he sacrifices that potential that he has that he's not currently getting to. So if you guys like this style of video, please comment below. We'll do more of these if different players comment the player you guys wanna see, how I would train them. As always, appreciate you guys. See you guys soon, peace.